And joining me now with more on her exclusive interview is the host of America Live, right here on the Fox News Channel, Megan Kelly. Megan, good to, hey. welcome back. Good to see you. Thanks. Good well, to be first here. First of all, great interview. You did a great job with this. Um, first of all, let, let's go to the tape that we just played here, where you have these guys standing outside of a polling place in outside of Philadelphia. You know, you're about to be ruled by the black man cracker, white devils. They've got the baton. They're wielding the baton, uh, trying to stop people for, from entering the polls. Yeah. Now, and the law says that's voter intimidation, that if you intimidate voters from not going to the polling station or you attempt to intimidate voters. And there was testimony by one person who was trying to vote that, they, that the one guy held up his arms and mm. physically blocked him from going into the polling station. Mm. Now, I mean, you tell me, is that or is that not voter intimidation? Well, That's the point this lawyer was trying well, to make. Well, he actually said in the interview to you that the case, the, the, a guy named the name of Bartle Bull, longtime Robert F. Kennedy civil rights activist, yes. worked in Mississippi in the 1960s, yes. you know, had incredible credentials yes. as it relates to civil rights and voting rights. And happened to be there when this happened. Yeah. And he, so he was a, an eyewitness. You couldn't find a better eyewitness for the prosecution. Yeah. This guy said he has gone to polling places back in the, in the past, in the 70s, where there was a noose hanging mm -hmm. over the polling station. This was worse. He said this was the worst case of voter intimidation so you, he's ever seen. So wait a minute. So you got the video. You've got credible witnesses. They, they default because they don't show up. Right. They, it's like he described They had it as a victory. A, the case victory. was won, Sean. So it was a matter of whether or not they were going to get the proper sentence. It was only about punishment at that point. All right, and it's a slam dunk. So he resigns over this. No, so here's what happened. So, yeah. so the, the political appointees of the Justice Department come in and say, forget it. Bail on the case. We're going to drop the whole thing, except for the guy against the baton. And they wanted it originally an injunction against him to stop him from doing this ever again in any city throughout the country and no batons forever. Instead, what the DOJ got for that guy with the baton was just a couple of years and only in Philadelphia. Okay, with the rest of the defendants, they all got dropped. This guy, Christian Adams, who was at the heart of the case, this is the lead trial attorney who won this victory, says the reason it was dropped. Now, what they tell us publicly is that, oh, the facts weren't there, the evidence wasn't there. You can make your own mind up whether you think that's true. But he says behind the scenes, there was a mandate issued by the political appointees of the Justice Department that no cases will be prosecuted in, in the voting rights section where the defendant is black and the victim well, is he, white. He, you asked him very directly, and he gave you a very direct answer on that. Now, we, we didn't get the entire interview today. We only got part one, but there is a... A very interesting development because you asked some very pointed questions about where this came from. Because look, they had the case. This is if this isn't voter intimidation, as he said, what's voter intimidation? Mm -hmm. So the question is, what was Eric Holder's involvement in this mm -hmm. case, and where did Eric Holder? You know, how did he come to his decision? Did you get an answer? Yeah, I asked him about uh, the attorney general himself and his role in this, and we're going to get into this tomorrow. But but the short answer is. The Department of Justice, after hemming and hawing on what Holder's role was in this case, finally submitted in a little, uh, in, in, a, in a little item that didn't get a lot of attention, an interrogatory answer. It's written testimony in the in connection with this Commission of Civil Rights Investigation, admitting at least that the Attorney General was consulted before yeah. this case was dismissed. All right. Now here's one other piece of the puzzle, and we'll be watching. Uh, you won't tell us exactly what time tomorrow, will you? Well, it's gonna. Well, the show gonna starts at show. one, and the show it's starts be, at one. It'll be in the I show. I think we've actually determined where in the All show. Right. No, that's but fine. high up in the show. All right. But, but Adam said something I thought was interesting too. He said the administration campaigned on transparency. They campaigned on restoring integrity to the Department of Justice. They campaigned on the idea that they were going to be post-racial. Yeah. And we're seeing just the opposite says in this case. they didn't case. live up to any of that. Right. And, 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 and he resigned as a result of the pressure to drop this case, which he thought was a great injustice. And we, we talk about this tomorrow. You know what he, when he resigned? Because they dropped the case several months ago. That, that didn't make him resign. He was upset, but it didn't make him resign. There is a top DOJ official who has been putting himself out there to Congress and to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, an independent agency that's investigating this case. He testified under oath. And when he went before that commission, he testified about why the DOJ dropped this. Wow. After this guy, Christian Adams, found out what he's testified to under oath, he went in that day okay. and, resigned. and resigned his position. That right. was three weeks ago. All right, I'm looking forward, honestly, to tomorrow. Make sure to tune in tomorrow for more of Megyn Kelly's interview with the DOJ whistleblower, Christian Adams. And by the way, here's a sneak peek of what you'll see tomorrow. So you sat him down before he gave that sworn testimony before the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights, and you warned him uh, that the testimony you understood he was about to give was go not going to be truthful. We made it very clear that continuing to say that the facts in the law don't support this case would not be consistent with the truth. What was his response?